Well, I mean, I'll be quite frank. I'm a terrible businessman. I should be making way more money at this than I do. I mean, you only have so many days to walk on the earth. You might as well do something worthwhile at the end. That was my idea when I first started this. Like All right, so we're here with uh, Boom TV doing another dope artist interview, and I am sitting before Matt Goss. Matt, uh, Uncanny Valley. Yep. We're going to talk a little bit about some of the new stuff that is happening for the gallery, but because maybe some people in the community might not know you, they've heard of you, they've never actually got to sit down and talk to you, we're going to start a little bit at the beginning. Yeah, fine with me. Okay. So uh, where were you born? Oh, I'm Fruta. Well, I was born in Junction, lived okay. in Fruta my entire life. Uh, nice. Moved up in Junction about, I think it was 15 or 16 years ago now. Okay. Yeah. But Valley so you're, native. You're a Valley, you're a Valley kid. Home and grown. Own, yep. Right on, right on. So <clears throat> you would think that probably art has always been maybe a part of your life. What was your early art life like? Oh, like as a little kid, I was always doodling, but... Uh, it was more or less just a coping mechanism to get through high school, I suppose you could say. Okay. <laughs> uh, I got kicked out of a lot of art classes, so I don't have any actual formal training. I'm actually just self-taught. So you were the guy always like, instead of paying attention, you were doodling? Yeah, I was doodling on the notebook, just kind of zoning out. How did you get kicked out of art class? Oh, uh, well, no, I got kicked out of school, and the oh. art class went with that. <laughs> oh, you got kicked I, out of school? Well, I, yeah, I'm not a high school dropout, okay, but you're... that's only because it kicked me out a few times. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, okay. Were you kind of a hellion back in the day, or I know you, I think you might still be. And I'm not saying you're not, but oh yeah, I loved uh, you know punk rock and bluegrass. Those are my high school years. Nice, <laughs> nice, nice. Okay, uh, whenever you're a kid, what did you want to be when you grew up? Oh, artist. Artist. Yeah, now, I mean, you've always wanted to be an artist. I don't think I was really you know well suited for much anything else. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, man. I think when I was a kid, I wanted to. When I grew up, I wanted to be a. Either a fire truck or a ninja. Uh, I don't know how I thought I was going to be a fire truck when I grew up. But. Hey, man. Hey, man. Sky's <laughs> the limit. So art is kind of one of those unique things in the fact that, you know, artists are often, like, self-critical. And so how does that, as an artist, how does that kind of work out? Like, how well, do you overcome that? I mean, it's best not to overcome that. Okay. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm mostly self-taught. Uh, I went through my high school years doodling, and then, oh, I was up in town here for a handful of years, and I started doing some live uninstructed figure studies. I was actually right across the street in the Marjorie Building, uh, right across from where one of our old locations used to be. It was a nice event. Tuesdays, you'd show up, you'd have three hours, uninstructed figure drawing. Uh, sometimes there'd be like a cheap bottle of Tisdale, like $3 bottle of wine going around, but it was just a fun event that kind of helped me develop my own skill. Before that, I'd never done any figure drawing, so when I first went in, I was terrible. But over the course of, oh, God, I don't know, years and years, I kind of developed a style. And the way I did that was by being incredibly critical on myself. Mm. You, I drew something, and I would stare at it, and I'd figure out what didn't look right. And by doing so, you kind of take that into you, and you process it, and you okay. get a little better each time. What is, what is figure... Figure drawing? drawing yeah. Oh, it's just uh, uninstructed figure drawing is just when you have a model pose, usually nude, and you just do some figures. So, so, so for the body. Yeah, body, the yeah, body, body figure studies, okay. yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah, and I preferred the uninstructed because I wasn't much for being instructed. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, he, the, the, the rebellious uh, artist kind of rebel against like, well, the norms. It was, just, it was just fun, funner that way. It's funner yeah. just to show up and figure it out for yourself than necessarily having someone to tell you how to do did it. Did you have any, any, even in your art classes before you got kicked out of school, did you have like fundamentals? Or? No, I went to about as uh, high as my actual art education went was freshman year. Uh, yeah, freshman year I had one art class. And that was mm -hmm. about it. <laughs> wow. Okay, that's cool, man. That's, like a, that's actually like truly self-taught your own style and your own way not being like influenced because I think as an artist sometimes you have a tendency to like emulate your mentors well no I'm definitely influenced uh, I think it was Pablo Picasso said you know good artists borrow great artists steal 
And the way I always interpret wow. that was, you got to take something into you and really make it a part of you. And then that influences you. Everything you see in life will, you know, influence you in some way. Huh. You know, same thing with your experiences. True. Steal, huh? Yeah, and I'm not thinking of it as, I don't know, when I mean that, I don't mean like plagiarize. I mean yeah, like yeah. when you steal it, you take it in, you literally make it a part of yourself. You yeah. incorporate it and then you, everything you, everything I put out is a accumula uh, accumulation of everything, everything I've, you know, yeah, everything I've seen or tucking in or haven't forgotten. Well, it's kind of like that <laughs> philosophical question or thought that where they say, there's no such thing as original thought because every thought is based on... Could be along that lines, what yeah. Is, what, just what is. What yeah, is exactly. That's a, that's a trip. Cool, man. Wow. Um, so what is your creative process? When you get into a piece, I, you were talking about that piece. What's the name of that piece? Oh, the Barbarella piece? Barbarella piece. That one is more just uh, someone gifted me a four-foot canvas, and I didn't put much thought into it, and I just, I'm going to paint Barbarella, so I just, I just do what I enjoy. Okay. I tell my artist... Uh, don't make commercially viable art or don't make something you think someone else will enjoy. You gotta make what you enjoy. No matter how silly, no matter how dumb, no matter how you know, out there or risque it is, if you make something you enjoy and put your whole heart into it, then someone else will enjoy it just as much. Uh, yeah. I see a lot of my artists, you know, they come in, they're like, oh, what should I make? I'm like, make what you want. Right. Make, you know, yeah. Not everyone's gonna like it, but someone will. And then that'll mean the whole world to someone. That's for sure. Yeah, because I think it's the same, when I talk to a lot of musicians for our interview series, is we talk about like writing music. Yeah. They say, they say that the best music that they make comes from them there, not because they want to make a hit. Or yeah. Because they, their intention is, their best songs are when their intentions are lined, lined up, you know what I mean? And when your intentions are lined into pleasing someone else, then that piece of art or song is not going to be like your best or the best because yeah. it's just coming from a different place. Well, right? then it's just not necessarily fun to work on stuff you're not fully into. Yeah. If you're just doing, like I've done lots of, uh, I've done mural paintings and I've also done uh, large scale logo reproduction for businesses, you know, oh. just painting logos on buildings. And yeah, it's tedious and it's not fun, fun. Uh -huh. And I'd much be rather painting a fun, different, wacky ass mural. Right. But I mean, pays the bills too. <laughs> and you're not like digging ditches. Exactly. That's exactly <laughs> what I tell people. Beats digging ditches. <laughs> Beats digging ditches. I like that. So let's talk a little bit about the, the gallery and some yeah. of the recent changes and what's going on. So you guys are having, you're having uh, a yeah. shift. I yeah, guess. it was a big change. Uh, we've been around for around eight to nine years now. Okay. I started this back just as a, well, I guess you can say an experiment. Okay. Uh, I was doing pop-up art shows around town, and uh, one of the sponsors for my art shows rented out the, or leased out the, oh, Harbert Lumber Building down on South 7th Street. Okay. He wanted oh, to make yeah. it a big concert venue, t-shirt venue, yada, yada, yada. Asked me if I wanted to open up an art gallery in the corner. Uh, I just got my tax refund back, and I was like, okay, yeah. I'll give it six months, we'll see where it goes. Uh, we made it a year there. Uh, we moved to Main Street after that. Uh, we kind of bounced around a couple different places down here on Main Street. And then in this last year, when we moved here into the old Benj's uh, shoe building, we had a big change. We just became a nonprofit entity now. Nice. Uh, before, I was a sole proprietor, and it's hard to run an artist co-op and say it's a co-op when, if there is any money made, someone gets it at the end of the day. Right. Not saying I ever made any money doing this, and I won't admit how much money I put into it over right. the years. Might be but, embarrassing. Yeah, that <laughs> ne was never really the point of this gallery. This entire gallery was just made to be a self-sustaining art gallery for artists to come, show their stuff, keep 100% of all the sales, and just have a fun time. Uh, so, yeah, when we moved here at the beginning of the year, I applied for a nonprofit status. Uh, we were going to go for a 501c3 status, which is the general normal one everyone's kind of aware of. Okay. Unfortunately, we didn't apply or we didn't qualify for that. Okay. Uh, it wasn't due to a lack of uh, artistic or educational value. It was just because we are a member due driven art gallery. Okay. That means all the members here pay a monthly due for membership, and by doing so, they, you know, have their free space to hang their art and all that money goes directly paying the rent. Well, the IRS sees that as a vehicle for the advancement of the careers of the artists. Okay. So 
Even if we did a class every five minutes, we wouldn't have qualified for 501c3. So you guys got 501c6. Uh, C6, yes. Which is the difference of, can you explain well, that? Well, we are a artist league now. Okay. It's, 501c6 is for trade businesses, trade leagues. It's actually the same uh, category the NFL is in, as funny as it sounds. Oh, nice. But yeah, well, what we are is we are a collection of professional artists who come together to improve our collective industry in, in the Valley. Yeah, we do it by doing exactly what we've been doing in the past eight years. We have an art space here that has dues as low as possible for artists. Mm -hmm. We let artists keep 100% of all the sales. Awesome. Uh, we do shows every month, big fun themed shows. And then we also like people in looking oh, around. Oh, yeah, 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 fun themed events. Uh, we also work with other nonprofits around town. Like we're good friends with the Veterans Art Center and like to do a benefit for them every year. That's cool. And then, yeah, we just help contribute as much as we can to the artistic scene here. So how, how does... I know like the the nonprofit status that makes it so that you're able to write stuff off maybe and then yeah. how does that work as far Unfortunately as the that's the one big difference wise. between us the C3 and C6 is any donations we get are not tax deductible. Mm. That's the one big drawback. So anyone who does donate to us, you know they're doing it out of the goodness of their hearts. Right. If if you see anyone who donates or supports us, they are doing it for the art scene. They're not doing it for a tax write off. Write -off. Yeah, 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 no, they're just doing it out of the, you know, goodness of their hearts. Okay. So. So Sarah, there's an artist in the valley, and they're like, man, I love that gallery. They, and all the events they have, there's a lot of people going in and out of that place. How do I, how do I get on there? You just got to show an interest. You got to walk through the doors and just ask me. Cool. Uh, we have a website. You can go on and do a little application on there, or uh -huh. you can just come in and drop in your name in the hat. Uh, what we do is anytime we have an opening, we go down the list of artists. We contact everyone and see who's still interested, who is available. And then we just set up simple little interviews. Uh, I have a small member committee that helps make the decisions with me. And then we add whoever we think would contribute the most or get the most out of the gallery. Dude, that's what's up, man. Yeah. So there's a, there's a level of like, you know, you know it's a, you got to be about it. You, you want to make sure that the artist is really about it. And yeah. Um, we prefer people who really get the most out of the gallery. Yeah. Uh, for example, I've had people come from up north in state. Amazing art. But I straight up asked him, I was like, are you going to be able to come to shows? Are you going to be able to change out your art? Are you going to be participating? Do you want to teach any classes? And they are honest. I'm like, no, I'd be up here like once a year to change out my art. And I got to mm -hmm. be frank with them, tell them like, yeah, your art's amazing, but I would probably choose a local person who might be even more at the beginning of their art and journey mm -hmm. than you just because I want people to really show up yeah. and get the most out of it. And you're creating, I think what's different than probably a lot of places that I've known about is as far as galleries is creating like a lot of community, right? Yeah. Through events well, and we have a wide variety of artists here. I cultivate a good swath here. We have people who've been doing this for years and even decades. Uh, and then we have people, this is a very first gallery experience. Wow. I mentioned uh, I'm not a high school dropout, but just because they kicked me out, <laughs> I by no means should own an art gallery. I just did it. And I like to provide that same opportunity for other artists as well, too. That's cool. Yeah. So I'm always, I'm always intrigued and interested in how artists are able to f f figure out the business side of things and the, like the bravery it takes to take that leap. The belief in yourself or sometimes it's like, what, what, is, what, what got you to say, hey, I'm going to do that? Because that's a big step. Well, I mean... I'll be quite frank, I'm a terrible businessman. I should be making way more money at this than I do. I'm okay. just doing this for, you know, we all end up in the same place in the end, so to speak. Dude. Uh, <laughs> I had cancer when I was 17 years old. Okay. And then I became disabled about, oh, I think it was about four years ago. Okay. And so, I mean, you only have so many days to walk on the earth. You might as well do something worthwhile at the end. Yeah. That was my idea when I first started this. Like I said, I thought it was, I'd give it six months. I would at least try. And I kind of date myself by this reference, but I say I feel the dreams did. Mm. I made it and I hope people would come help support it. And yeah. so far we've been doing it for eight years with an amazing support of this valley. Wow. So you're really coming from a place of really appreciating life and like being in the moment. And, uh, oh, that's what's up. Wow. That's cool. Thank you for sharing that, man. No, no, no problem. You were talking about your disability. What, what happened? I know that you well, it was actually a result of my chemotherapy. Was it? I had a platinum-based chemotherapy, and that ended up giving me a heavy metal poisoning over the next, you know, 20-some years. Mm. And I developed what's known as the, it's a form of peripheral neuropathy. Mm. My actual title of it is cramp fasciculation syndrome. 
Uh, what it entails is just a ton of, what they've told me is nerve pain, which is this intense pain. I kind of call it like a pain in between your bones and your muscle. Really weird. Yeah, um, I can imagine any kind of pain. In your yeah, bones. and then I also get these fun little, uh, what they call fasciculations, which are tiny little muscle spasms. Like individual groups of my body will just start spasming. Uh, I'm on medications to keep those under and in control. I mm -hmm. mean, uh, but it's kind of a at this point, it's an equivalent ex exchange situation. The more I use my body, the more pain I'll feel wow. directly after it. Wow. So I kind of have to balance that in life. Are you in a constant state of pain typically, or? I mean, like I said, it depends on how much I do. If I sat in a bed and did absolutely nothing in my life, I would only get my random what I call voodoo pains, where it's just mm -hmm. like random stabbing of a voodoo doll. But say if I, you know. If I, oh, for example, I painted uh, our, uh, the cabinet here. Yeah. The first couple times I painted that before my disability, it took me an afternoon. This time around, it took me three days, and my hand just now is getting back to usable situation. Wow. So, yeah, it, it's just, it is what That's it rough. is. That's rough. Too. Nah, it could be worse. I thought I had ALS for an entire summer. So after I found out I didn't have ALS, I was walking on cloud nine. Perspective, right? Indeed. Perspective. All right, um, so whenever you were kind of going on, on the journey of creating your own gallery and then building the kind of art community and opportunities that you have, did you have, did you do it all by yourself or did you have like a uh, friend no. or a homie or a When I very first started off, uh, I was doing uh, pop-up art shows. Uh, I actually started off doing erotic art shows about once a year and that kind of snowballed in this. Uh, I have had partners throughout the years uh, come and go, uh, but it's a taxing, taxing business being, running an art gallery, especially a nonprofit one that doesn't see any actual revenue come in. Mm -hmm. So uh, I've learned, uh, now we have a board of directors here that helps us make decisions, we have committees, and I just take whatever help, you know, whoever has to give it. Does, do you, I was just gonna ask you something about the, <laughs> the nonprofit. Oh, can you qualify for grants? Yes, we can. Sweet. You yes, got, we can. You guys, now you're you, able to tap yeah, into that, Yeah, we're right? just getting ready to get our ducks in a row this next year and start making some big big plans for you know, grant writing, bringing in more members. Uh, we're also wanting to see about opening up the, well, right now we're member driven by just the local artists in the gallery. Mm -hmm. We're looking to actually expand that to be a patron membership to where people outside the gallery can contribute a small, like, monthly due, mm -hmm. whether it's just even five bucks a month, to help with operating costs. Because mm. I, mean, I don't want to do this for free, and I want to have people behind you getting paid if they can, but right, right now we're just not at that point. Yeah. We're, we're continually growing and expanding. So, well, hopefully this kind of this video uh, spreads some awareness on like what's, what's needed in the community when it comes to art. Cool, brother. Well, um, I'm, I think that kind of wraps up the questions that I really wanted to ask you. Okay. And I, I really wanted to showcase the gallery. So in on some B-roll, we're going to have some video and some of, of the, the space here. Before I leave, though, are you, do you, I know that you guys are doing some um, classes. Are you guys doing any kind of like entertainment or anything like that? Well, or? our classes are at our members' leisure. Okay. I allow all my members of the gallery here the opportunity to use this amazing space as a classroom. And... Myself not being from art school, I love seeing what they can share and teach as well, too. Yeah. So anything we can share with the community is always welcome. Best way to check that out is check us out on our website or our Facebook. We do announcements on both of those for upcoming events and classes. And then we do our shows every month, big, fun-themed shows. Like we do an Alice in Wonderland show. We do steampunk shows. Mm. Uh, as I mentioned, we do benefits for like the Veterans Art Center. We've worked with the National Alliance on Mental Illness. Uh, we worked with uh, Super Ad Art Jam. And yeah, just Dang. so what's the the is is it all uncanny valley on Facebook or on everything or what? Un, yeah, uncanny valley art gallery. Uh, we're the only one in the book, so to speak. Okay. Uh, our website's uncannyvalleyart.com. Dot com. Okay, I'll put yeah. that on the screen. Yeah, awesome. Uh, yeah, and then we're open every day except for Monday and Tuesday. And noon what's your to address? Six. 514 Main Street, the 514 old Benji's Shoe Building. Old Benji's yeah. Shoe which Building. Which is an absolute beautiful building. We this were really lucky building. to get into this space. Yeah, it is a 
really dope space. I'm definitely going to be showing some of this uh, footage. Probably as we're talking right now, we'll be showing the footage. So it's yeah. all good. Yeah, we've always been doing good. And our last space was a great space, but I akin it to more uh, seeming like a retail space with art on the walls. Yeah. Here yeah. we're a little more atmospheric for oh, the art man. scene. Oh, man, with these old school ceilings, dude. Original tin ceilings. We oh, went down to the original hardwood floor down there. Yeah, it's... Uh, there was a lot of work put in by a lot of the members of the gallery here that all helped volunteer for it. That's what's up. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, bro. So before we uh, land this plane, I got uh, what I call the hot seat. And yeah. Some oh, grill me. Here we go. Some fun questions to kind of end the thing out. All right. Matt Goss, first question. What was your first job you ever had? Oh, man. I think... Uh... I think my old man got me a job down at the co-op in Fruita counting bolts and nuts doing inventory one summer because he was tired of me just sitting around on my butt. <laughs> I got my first job because my dad made me get a job too. Yeah, I'm yeah. The same as that. Hell yeah. Okay. Uh, if you, if uh, you have a preference, dogs or cats? Oh, cats all the way. Why? I mean, I, just more akin to what I'm about. I'm not about uh, you know owning an animal. I'm more about just living with an animal. Hey, I never thought of that. I, I like cats, too. I'm a cat dude, too, but mostly just because they're so abusive, <laughs> and I like the abuse. <laughs> okay, if you, your preference, another preference, uh, sushi or steak? Oh, do I have to make a choice? Uh, uh, can we split the middle and just have a tuna steak to where it's you know, cooked on the outside and nice and raw on the middle? Hey, they have the surf and turf. A little bit of... No, I, I do okay. love my sushi, though. Sushi, yeah. Tu sushi and steak. If you could have them together, you would. Oh, yeah. All right, all right. Uh, rumor on the street has it that you're a horror film uh, buff, I guess you might say. What yeah. is your top horror film? Oh, well, I've always been for the great Friday the 13th. Like, yeah, yeah just something about the music and um, the, they were fun. They were, they were more fun than a lot of the horror movies nowadays. I always liked the Friday the 13th movies because they showed boobs once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> Did, yeah. what, so which one? Is there one that is like... Oh, yeah, I love uh, Friday 13th 6, Jason Lives. I like that one quite a bit. I love the Friday 13th Part 3, the one in 3D, just because Ooh, that one's just, yeah. oh, I love anything that pokes out at right, you. Oh, God, right. the, oh, the pitchfork's coming at me, oh, no. Dude, I haven't seen Friday 13th in so long. I need to go back, go back and revisit love those. Them. For sure, for sure. All right. Um, this is another question I meant to ask a little earlier, but it'll be the final question. Yeah, what's, uh, what's your art form of choice? Oh, well, I used to love pen and ink. Uh, I used to just be a pen and ink guy, just doodle away hours on that. Uh, unfortunately, with my disability these days, I can't really... You know, right, I also man, do, we'll I also, I'm sorry, I also oh, do yeah. sculpture as well, too. I just completely forgot. I, I dink around a lot of sculptures, pretty much whatever strikes my fancy. Well, you have the space to do pretty much anything you want to do, right? <laughs> right yep. on. So yep. live from Uncanny Valley, artist uh, League. Gallery. Yeah, we still call ourselves Uncanny Valley Art Gallery just because it's, you know, I know that's such a nice read. But yeah, we are an artist league, like that's that. for sure. I know that we're a league now, though, right? We're not a band. We are. <laughs> All right, Matt Goss, thanks for sitting, kicking back and chilling out with us and sharing us a little bit about the gallery and a little yeah. bit about your life. Uh, shoot, man. I got Will over here with the other camera. Make some noise, Will. Yeah. All <laughs> right, man. We're just going to be signing out. Take it easy, brother. Thank hey, you, man, so thank much. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Yes, yep. sir.